I sanded all the body lines out. There were on each corner, so one here, one on the opposite side, and then across the back there, and they're quite visible normally. Um, I bought these little files, little Tamiya files, quite cheap, but really, really effective. And they're super fine, and they don't really leave any damage or marks in the plastic. Um, so by the time you file the lines out, and then sand it with, I used some 800 wet and dry, and then some of this 1500, and then three coats of yellow. And I mean, I've got no spray booth, and it, it is really, it's come out good enough. It's good enough for me anyway. So now I'm gonna do the masking for all the red, which I'm not looking forward to. It's gonna take hours. Um, and then get some coats of red on, and hopefully, It'll be coming along. The rest of this is already primed as well, ready for other colours.
that's the masking done. That's took four hours, way too long. Hopefully, I'm gonna get a result that's worth the time I've put in. So just done a quick light coat of yellow to seal any edges with the tape. So essentially the red then wouldn't go underneath and bleed hopefully. So, so just a light coat. Let that dry for half an hour then I'm gonna shoot the red. First coat of red on, just enough to almost cover the yellow. Let that dry a little while and go for a second and third coats. Well that's the second and third coat done. Just need to leave it to dry now for a couple of hours before I go anywhere near it to take the tape off. She'll see whether anything's bled underneath. Okay, well it's been a couple of hours, so I'm gonna get this tape off now and see what we've, we've got. Try not to touch anything. Here goes.
Hi, just a quick update here. Now, if you're looking at the calendar behind me, you might have noticed it's October and it doesn't look like I've done a lot. Well, I've had to do it again. Um, I decided after the red that I was gonna put a couple of coats of clear on, clear lacquer, the Tamiya TS13. Now, the yellow had two, two weeks to dry before the red went on, another two weeks doing other projects. And then I put the clear coat on and I don't know why, but the clear somehow managed to loosen the red and the yellow, like they all merged together. So on, on all the edges, through the red, you could see the yellow and through the yellow, you could see the undercoat on all the body lines uh, and it just looked terrible. So I was pretty gutted, but anyway, I let it dry for a couple of weeks, sanded it, wet sanded it all the way back and started again. So it's been done yellow again, remasked, and the red's been done again. Now it's actually come out way better than before. And I'm certainly not gonna do the clear coat again. There's no need to. Um, I'll bring you over in a minute just so you can see. But in the meantime, I've also painted the driver and all the other little bits and pieces. So what's left to do is paint the running boards, matte black, the window details, put it together, put the decals on. Oh yeah, I've also put the lights on because I've hand painted those, the, the lenses in the colours. So yeah, I'll bring you over quickly, show you that before I continue with the rest of it. So the driver is a mixture of spray paint and brush painted. So the helmet is spray painted red. The black steering wheel bits were spray painted black and then the, the detail parts were brushed. There's the back light cover, windscreen wipers, number plate holders. So they're in the sort of semi matte black. And then the body, which second attempt come out even better. So it was worth it in the end, kind of. But I would rather not have done it again. Sorry for the squeaking. I haven't got a turntable. I've done the lights too, they've been put on. I hand painted the coloured lenses. And that's it for now. So here we are ready for decals. Um, before I do that, I just thought I'd show you some of the bits and pieces I used to do this final painting, particularly the black trim around the windows. I struggle with doing everything by hand, wobbly hands, not brilliant eyesight, so I rely massively on masking tape. Um, so I used the three mil flexible tape for the front and back windows, so this one, and that one worked really well because the curves are just right and it's fairly flat um, to stick to. It, it's not as sticky as the normal masking tape, I find. So then I used the combination of the, the one mil, which is this one, and the two mil, this one, for the side windows um, to these and those here. Took quite a while, oh, and the door handles, took quite a while, but came out pretty good. I also used the cotton swabs that they sell. There's loads of different sizes and they've got like a nice little sharp point on them. There's that size and I've also got these here. A bit bigger, but they're really, really good. I've also recently moved over to using the 
this style of paint, I guess it's more like an oil-based rather than the acrylic, which I've always used in the past. Um, the first time I used it was actually on the Ford Ranger on the grill, and it adheres really well to the chrome without sanding it back. And it also, you get time to, for the paint to flow before it kind of dries, and it's not patchy. Um, so I, I prefer it, so I might start buying that in the future for, for other bits. Um, other things to watch out for, when you install in the mirrors, they have to pass through a hole in the body, bearing in mind with all the coats of paint, the hole becomes smaller, so it won't go through. I ended up having to sand the hole fully back, take the paint off. So I used like a kebab stick, which I use for just about everything, with some wet and dry wrapped around it, and then just gently spun it in the hole, and then also sanded the actual chrome off the, the plastic door mirror to get that in without chipping the paint. Um, yeah, glue wise, really, really got to be careful because if you get any on the body, it just ruins it. So I used, what did I use? Some of this glue we have in Australia, Tarzan glue it's called. It's a bit like Yoohoo, I suppose you'd call it in the UK. A uh, little tiny dab, like on the back of the chrome there put it on a stick and then I got another stick with blue tack so I could sort of drop it on. I didn't want to dribble the Tamiya glue on it. These here, I taped them onto the window and pushed them in the hole and then dabbed a bit of the Tamiya glue on the back, really small amount so it didn't dribble through and left it overnight. Um, same with these. These didn't need gluing in actually. The instructions tell you to glue the clear into the chrome, but it, they stay in without needing it. The orange indicator lights, again, a little blob of the tars and glue into the chrome. And then these just push in from the back. I, I haven't glued them. This is like for a shelf queen, so I'm not gonna drive it. And there's, there's no chance of them rattling and falling out. Um, and old mate driver, he's, glued in with the Tamiya glue, and I just left the body on its side 90 degrees overnight with a bit of tape on the inside just so it didn't fall back in. Here are two sets of decals. The first ones here came from MCI in Canada. Then I had a second set made from a guy in the UK, found on eBay, RC decals-2. And the reason for that is when these arrived, the first set, I realized that the 537 that goes on the door is black on white, which is correct for the period vintage decals but on the color scheme, it shows it this way around. So I asked this chap to reverse them if possible, which he did. So I'm gonna mix and match because there are differences between the two and on some, on one set, one might be better and on the other set, another one's better. So I'll show you why. I forgot to mention the, the decals from RC Decals Dosh 2 in the UK. They're also pre-cut which some people hate. I personally love it. Um, they've even got the bleed and then the cut is inside the line. So if you look at that 537, for example, see that little white line, that's the cut. So they're cut right on the edge. So they're super neat. Um, but here's one of the things I was talking about. So if you put the 537 with the Baja 500, I'm not sure whether the camera picks it up, but the, the black's a little bit washed out. And this is from the same set. So I'll probably mix and match it with that one. Where is it there? From MCI, because the black is blacker. Let's put this round. So that's the, the MCI one. And this is the RC decals one. So it's just a bit sharper in the detail. 
and it's cut out. Bell ray, what's that look like? I think that one's, the one on the right is nicer. Sharper lettering, a more authentic darker blue. Again, personal choice. Well, here it is finished, all the decals on. Uh, as I previously mentioned, I've used two sets of decals, uh, one set from MCI and another set from RC decals. I've mostly used the RC decals one. Um, the MCI ones installed on here are the Baja 500, Jackman wheels, and the little saw circular logo next to the 537 in a black disc. Everything else is RC decals, but between the two of them, it looks really good. I'm really, really happy with it. So uh, we'll call this one done. Thanks for watching.